Poštovani gledalci, dobar dan i evo nas još jednom u emisiji. Oni pobjeđuju nešto malo drugačijeg formata jer nam i dalje uslove diktira pandemija koja je i dalje u ofanzivi, tako da mnogi sportaši, prije svega oni koji će učestvati na zimskim olimpijskim igrama, su vrlo na oprezu i jedini način da radimo s njima intervju je ovakav. Dakle, na distanci, linkovima i srećom to tehnologija omogućava. Naš današnji gost je u Vengenu, naš današnji gost je norveški skijaš, objednik svjetskog kupa iz 2020. Aleksandar Olmot Kilde. Alex, thank you very much for your time. I know the schedule is very, very tight and uh, you have not much time, but we are really appreciated. How do you feel? How is it in Vengen? Thank you for having me. I mean, uh, yeah, the schedule is tight, but um, that's a part of the game. We know it. Uh, Vengen looks uh, pretty good. Um, it's a lot of snow here. They got, I guess, 20 centimeters the last two days. So they got some work to do before the first training tomorrow. But uh, in general, it's beautiful here in Wingen, as always. I, I, I can't imagine, but you will not work on, on the course. Somebody else will work preparing <laughs> the perfect conditions for you. Uh, Wingen, yeah. is, uh, this is the festival of speed, the plus slalom in the Sunday. Uh, Super G, two downhills. So you are on your pitch, let's say, on this way. Uh, you've been once on the, on the podium in Wengen, and I presume it's not enough for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's um, Wengen is quite special. Um, it's such a long downhill with a lot of elements in it with uh, high speed, long jumps. You just got to, you know, fit a good run together to be able to win this race. And uh, I've been on a podium, I think, once or twice. Um, and, you know, I want to i want to i want more um uh, and this time i'm in better shape than ever so everything's possible and we have three chances this weekend coming up so i'm i'm really looking forward to this of course uh, because your start in this season is absolutely explosive i'm talking on speedy on speedy events and uh, you you won the three super g you won one downhill you are in second place in general uh, table etc etc so yeah you are coming in very good shape and very good form. Yeah, it's been quite an uh, amazing start of the season. Never had such a season before. And coming back from an injury, I would never expect anything like it. Um, and being in the position I am now, it's quite incredible. And uh, I have a lot of fun doing the sport uh, after being gone for a while. Um, and I'm actually really, really looking forward for the next races to come. They're going to be two or three months now with quite intensive program and uh, I, it's no better timing to be in good shape than now so this is going to be a lot of fun. Of course it will be a lot of fun. Uh, let's talk a little bit about downhill races because in the beginning of season we have completely different different courses, different snow etc etc and especially what is very interesting for everyone I think how are you managing to dominate, for example, on Valgarden and Norwegians win there like 14, uh, no, the 14 races you won 10 times, and especially you are carrying on the heritage what made before the Swingdal uh, cues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is the special on, on, on this on this course? You like it? Um, I get this question quite often because when I get back there, people. Or journalists or people in general ask me about what what this what does this hill kind of make the Norwegians be so fast and my answer is always the same uh, you got great snow you got a uh, challenging course with a lot of technical uh, challenges um, which uh, I think for the Norwegians fit pretty well because we come from a background where we always had focus on skiing well uh, and we we have a fast turn and we can we can actually do that there with this type of snow and you can arc you can make speed instead of just maintaining speed we can actually have have some turns where we we gain more speed than everywhere else in the world cup circuits and of course we like to be in in south uh, in in south Tyrol and and to compete in uh such crowd and and also the terrain and everything 
it's it fits us well and i think as a team we have a really really good plan there uh also with the analysis done before the race we we kind of know the hill better than i think most of the teams out there well you are talking about team spirit but skiing is individual sport so you are helping each other even if you won't beat your colleague from national team how does it work how it looks like communication between you when you are on breakfast and dinner or whatever uh, how does it uh, work how how it looks like it well so the mentality in our team attacking vikings mentality is that we we always try to make goals together uh, and how we do that is kind of communicate during training and also share your inputs and your skills with with everyone around you and try to make the people around you better um and by doing that is kind of wanting to give from yourself um and when you have such a set culture in team then the youngsters coming up and uh, and wanting to be part of the team just has to understand that's okay if i want to be a part of this team then i have to give something but then i will always also get something uh and that in total will make such a good uh, balance and and make us win races which is in the end the most important uh no matter if it's an individual sport or uh what it is can we talk about special or speciality of norwegian ski school or secret about raising up the youngsters in this in this, in this direction um i th- I don't think there's anything special in particular. I just know that um uh, young skiers in Norway they have a lot of fun skiing. Uh, it's a lot of that's where you have your friends. Um there's a really good culture of skiing in the afternoon after school. Um under the lights, uh it's dark up there but still you got this kind of vibe that you never really can create somewhere else. Uh and this makes you want to come back. It makes you want to continue to get better at what you're doing and and for me as when i was young i always remember just staying out on the on the hill for yeah, i don't know how many hours but as long as the lift were open i was out there and uh, we were just cruising around with our with our friends and uh, had a lot of fun uh, and i think that gives a lot of motivation and and uh, gives you a lot of skills too to be able to then take the next steps when you get older Uh can you tell us who pushed you down the hill instead to using the uh cross country skis how did you decide to move because we know the regions are very good about Yeah yeah we as a family we always had focus on being active um and where i grew up uh pretty close to Oslo there was this one T bar and a lift and we i grew up just 50 meters away from it so i could just ski in and ski out so that was it was easier for me to do something on skis and this time it was alpine skiing and i thought alpine skiing was way more fun than cross country skiing um i think a lot of people do <laughs> but uh for me it was just uh being out there with my family i have a older brother that also was an active skier and he's six years older than me so He always drag me around and I just try to keep and hold on him and you know try to beat him. Uh never did, but uh that's not the story. <laughs> okay, let's go in the present situation again. Uh after the Val Gardena you uh drop the uh, giant slaloms races even you are was uh, some point you are was a world champion in the giant slalom in juniors. So uh, you drop it a few races and how did you feel watching the guys in Adel Boden because in last year in Adel Boden before your injury you made the good results four and fifth place is if i remember well Mhm Well i decided this year to focus on getting back after injury um get on a level that's uh where i want to be um uh, and i'm there now for sure but still my knee is kind of young and um it's it's not 100% back to where i can push the limits to be honest uh so then it was easy decision for me to just to this year gs is going to be a discipline i don't really prioritize um 
So for me, I have now focused on staying healthy and being able to race the, all the speed events. And this year is more speed races too. So I think uh, it's a good decision for me. And I, I, of course, wanted to be back on GS sometimes for next year. But uh, right now, it's better for me to just take down the uh, plan a bit and uh, be ready for Olympics and the races coming up. Yeah, I can imagine. And also, I can imagine that his Odermatt at the moment, he's dominating. He's on the second position, almost 400 points more. But yeah. probably the re reason is because you are dropped the giant slaloms, etc., etc. It will be very difficult, I presume, to fight and chase him in the, in fighting for overall. Yeah, you know, Odermatt this year is just incredible. Um, when you win four or five races in GS, then... And you also have podiums in downhill and win Super G, then I mean, you know, what can be better? So for him this year, it's amazing. Um, for everyone else, it's hard, really hard to beat him in the overall. So he deserves it. If C takes it down this year, then of course everything can happen. But I think he can be really confident about that. Um, um, for me, it's more about winning, winning races and be healthy on start for all the races I'm competing in. And that's a, that's a mentality this year. And I will be back stronger and try to fight for the overall than in the next seasons coming up. Yeah, because I was looking, when we are looking at the boxes next to your name, there are missing the medals from the World Championship part of the team events and the Olympic Games. So I presume one of the target, your goal is Olympic Games in Pe yeah. Beijing. Yes, for sure. Um, I have some revenge to do there in, in the Olympic Games and also World Champs where I have been in a position earlier where I could take a medal, but uh, um, there's been small things on the way that didn't go by my way. So this is, this is time to shine now. And um, I really, really want to try to get that medal. Uh, that's, uh, that's one of my biggest goals and hopefully it's going to happen. I spoke in the beginning in the introducing in the program about uh, situation, specific situation with the COVID, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, all the athletes who is uh, approaching the Winter Olympic Games must be very careful of contacts, et cetera, et cetera. If you are positive, then you are practically losing possibility to participate in Olympic uh, uh, Games. How do you cope with this situation physically, mentally? What is uh, more challenging? More, ch more challenging? It is, it is frightening somehow to know that you're walking around people that might have the virus and, and you can be, if you get it, then you can't compete in the Olympics. And that's, that's a big impact for, for us athletes. And, and also that's a risk you have to take because uh, if you drop a World Cup race and you lose your right ranking and then you lose a good starting position in the Olympics. So for us to skip the next two weeks is no that's not a choice and that's not an option. Um, so for me now to go into the next two weeks, I stay basically my, in my own room and, and try to just avoid any contact with, with any other people than my team. Um, and um, also I hope the World Cup circuit in, in general has the same kind of um, mindset. So we are stopping the spreading and, and try to stay safe because the impact is pretty big for us if we get a positive test. Uh, what is so special? Let's say, let's talk about Super G. You won three races in a row. What is so special? Because obviously this is suit you very well. And uh, whatever it is, snow conditions or, or terrain or whatever it is, you are, you, are, you are, let's say, on your house when you are on the Super G course. Yeah, um, it's hard to say exactly what it is, but I think um, it's a discipline where you have to have a good team around you to be able to actually make a good plan for the run because you have one chance, you have one inspection, and then you have to go full gas. And if you don't, then you won't win. Um, so the analysis we do the day before, um, the analysis we do through the inspection and be able to kind of create a good line and, and see where you kind of want to go. 
then if you manage to do that the best, then the chances of winning is is high. Uh, and of course, you have to ski well. You have to go clean. You have to be in position. And it's a lot of coming combination here that makes you win the race but for me it's more of a if i stand on start and i have a really good race plan and i execute it then it usually goes well uh alex uh, can you tell us feeling i know it's for my opinion and probably the most of the journalists who is following in skiing and who is skiing it they own it is a downhill and super g there are people talking about technical disciplines like slalom and giant slalom. But for my opinion, uh, downhill and super G is more technical than slalom because just because the high speed. So how do you feel in this high speed uh, decisions making split hundreds of seconds? And uh, what sort of feeling you, you've got when you are uh, flying, let's say, 140 kilometers an hour? It's quite an amazing feeling. Uh... But it can also be kind of a terrifying feeling because if you're not in control and you feel you don't, you're not ready for what's coming, then it's really a tough discipline. Uh, but like any, anything else, if you can control it, if you have a good plan, if you have, if you attack in the right intensity and you hit the jumps the right direction, you know how things are flying, you know how fast it's going to go, then. And down is such an amazing discipline, and uh, I've done all four of them, and I would say down is the the one I really enjoy the most. If everything goes as planned, of course. Um, but I think just this combination of high speed, heavy turns, and long jumps, and that you actually you're actually driving as fast as you can down from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. And that in itself is a pretty cool experience. Uh, by the way, from top to down the mountain, can you hear the voices around? Can you hear, for example, commentator from the from the finishing area on which position you are? Can you hear the numbers, the time, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, intermediate time? No, <laughs> no, no chance. It's um, <laughs> too loud, you know. When you're approximately 100 kilometers per hour, then the wind is way too loud, so you you can't hear yourself breathing. So it's kind of you're in your own bubble and and trying to stay focused, and the adrenaline is like rushing. So it's really not possible to hear anything or see anything on the side of the of the. Of the no, slope, I, of course I, I I knew it, but I am asking because most of a lot of our spectators don't know all those details. You know, no, and no, also, it's a very good question because you how do maybe you think know? Like, do you know, do you have a feeling in which position you are at the moment when you're on course? Do you know how you are good or where you need to corrections, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, with experience I've gained over the years, I can understand when I am good, good underway or if I do a mistake that costs too much time. Um, it's all about that kind of the ground speed I bring from top to bottom uh, where I don't really have anything that kind of went wrong um, and I feel that wow well, now I really have a good flow then I usually get a good, pretty good result as well uh, but you never know uh, it can also be that you feel like you're going really fast but then you cross the finish line and you're two seconds out and you don't really understand why and that's usually when you're not in shape um, but if you're in good shape then you usually can have a run where you're like Ugh, that didn't feel so good, and then you cross the finish line here one second ahead. So it's it's a really complex sport when it comes to times and knowing how fast you are on the way. It's actually impossible. <laughs> uh, Alex, uh, you you are successor of the one of the best ever, Marcel Hirscher. Did you say when he gone from the scene when he leave the space to others, and you use the space on most. Uh, let's say successful way you won the 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 the, the general uh, title. Did you expect it? 2020. Well, first of all, you know I have huge respect for Hirscher and what he accomplished because that's being in the same position as him as an athlete, uh, delivering you know that many victories 
in not, I don't know how many years he skipped World Cup, but it's not that many years. And looking at that and then looking at myself and being like, wow, that is, that is quite something. Uh, and that, yeah, hats off, hats off. That's amazing. And of course, when he decided to quit, then that opens a door for everyone else. Uh, and the year after, I, I was in good shape and I had a really good season. And then I was the one that got through that door the first. So that was uh, quite amazing. <laughs> uh, as I remember well, you changed the material. Let's say you changed uh, uh, equipment, the gear. Uh, how is important for the skier? How long you take to adapt of the new gear, the new material, the new perspective of the this point of logistic? So I have been changing a little forth and back here because I, I was on Atomic uh, for many years and then I changed to head skis and then I thought it was going to be easier than it was. Um, but then I figured out equipment that, that's just so individual uh, and I can't just jump straight into the boots and the skis that my teammates were using because my body is all different and uh, it's reacting differently. So it took me yeah one and a half years before I was back winning again uh, but I was never as stable as I was with Atomic. Um, and then I changed back to Atomic and then suddenly I won the overall uh, with, I don't know, seven podiums and I had such a good season. It was really stable. And this is something I will remember for the rest of my life, that small impacts have such a big kind of impact to your results and, and what you do though. So it's quite, quite amazing to look at it that way. Alex, may I say something else to add to this atomic family? So probably will change something when you start a relationship with Michaela Schifrin. So it's a perfect package, as I can say, the most famous sports couple at the moment in the world. So how does it work? I, I, I mean, uh, if you are, do you training sometimes together? Do you are practicing sometimes together? Do you are uh, influence? Uh, she's brilliant in technique disciplines, a little bit more winners, uh, winning uh, trophies next to her name than yours, mm -hmm. 10 in 10 years. And uh, yeah. how does it work? How does it work, these relations? Oh, this relationship is uh, quite amazing. Um, of course, we are humans. We're normal people being together and and having a good time together. Uh, first of all, that's I, I would say that's the most important thing. And then, and then you have skiing on the side. Um, and we are so lucky that we're both kind of experienced and, and we have so much to talk about when it comes to how to handle different situations, how to, you know, what kind of equipment do you kind of like and use and we're on the same skis and, and also sharing technical skills with each other. I'm more on the speed side, she's more on the tech side, but together we can, we have so much to talk about and so much to have fun with, um, just arguing and, and discussing different um, decisions we make in the way. So uh, it's a great package of, of course, a lot of love and, and also a lot of uh, fun moments, uh, professional skiing and, and just being, a support for each other, and I think that's uh, quite awesome. Fantastic. I remember two years ago, I spoke with uh, her briefly, five, six minutes in Cortina. After she, after the, she made the series of winning on the, on the, on the speed, like a super giant, she won three in a row. So that was a really touching experience for the boat. So can you, uh, now we are approaching Olympic Games, part of the, there is a Bengen, there is a kids bill, you must be very careful about, uh, of course, your target. I presume your target is medals on Olympic Games in, in Beijing. Uh, so how, it, what sort of strategy you do have in, in approaching those, those events in front of you before the Olympics? Um, 
there's no really change of strategy than other normal World Cup races. Of course, the first and most important is to stay healthy and, and to be kind of physically ready for what's coming. Um, and then everything is so new for everyone and for me as well. So going there will be kind of just trying to stay calm and, and lower the shoulders and and try to make a good image of how it's actually going to be. Um, the downhill there is, I've heard, is challenging. And you get there and you just have to use every day as it was the last one and try to gain as much experience you can with uh, doing good analyzes and, and a good preparation will make you be well prepared and hopefully deliver some good results as well. Alex, time is flying. Already, already you are 25 minutes. A okay. fantastic interview. You are very, it's great to talk to you, big honor. And we wish you all the best in Olympic Games and bring home all package, both of you, much as possible <laughs> medals. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thanks. Alex, and good luck. Thanks for having me. Eto, poštovani gledalci, bio je to Aleksandar Kilde, trenutno najbrži čovjek na skema u svijetu, govorimo disciplinama spustu i supervele slalomu, bio je gost naše specijalne emisije, specijalnog izdanja, oni pobjeđuju. Doviđenja i ostanite uz program Al Jazeera.